I'm Carly Samuelson, and I got next. You next up, and you ain't been on sports like talk. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking it, you up next. Keep the points go hard. Rock the star on the big scene, make them know who you are. You don't break the sway. Don't set up for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flex. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, where to say go? Who got next? Who got next? Look at my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Yeah, that theme song saw me. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow, rising stars, real people, real stories, and real conversations. And ladies and gentlemen, oh my goodness, where my shooters at? We got one of the dopest three-point assassins. Hey, I'm going to tell you like this. If you're watching the show, Pipe down. You don't want none of the smoke. This young lady doing 44. How you feeling today, 44? I'm feeling great, but you having me up. <laughs> hey, I know. That's what I'm saying. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Stanford alum, recent champion of CB Aventius. I hope I didn't butcher that too bad. But uh, we got Carly Samuelson, come from a legacy family in the basketball community. Kevin, we doing work, baby. We made it. We made it. Hey, 44, how you living today, though? Thank you for coming in on our show. Yeah, for sure. Thank you guys for having me. I'm oh. having a great day, but it just got better, for sure. <laughs> hey, well, check this out. If this is your first time rocking with us, I am your host, the mouth of the South, B. Jones, Mr. Yeet himself. I'm rocking alongside of my brother from another mother, the head coach, KT. Kev, how you doing, KT? I, I, I just got to know. How do you keep getting us these bomb these bomb people just these stories of them because that's when it's going to be a special one I, I don't know if anybody know this young lady work hard to get where she at and she putting it in in the gym or, i'm just i'm just telling y'all this is about to be a banger but i gotta know kevin what's the secret to the sauce man what's what, what how you make the sausage man closed mouths don't get fed b jones so we know uh coach schrote who there it is harley and we learned that whenever we want something we just got to add somebody and so is this a nomination video kt you know what Yes, we're going to give you credit for nomination. Sound the alarm. Woo! Well, check this out. If this is your first time watching the show, we want to first and foremost welcome you to our platform. It means a lot. We know you could have been there watching a million other wax sports shows, but you decided to check out ours, and we appreciate the love. It means a lot to us. We put a lot of work and effort into doing this, and we can't do it without you. But we got to ask you for a quick favor. A couple of questions. First off, me and Kevin, we energized by you interacting with us. Leave comments. As we go through this thing, tell us what you think. Thing. Let us hear your voice and you sound off as we go through and we ask uh, the shooter in the building as we ask 44 some questions. But also, listen, we gotta we gotta do the, we gotta pay the bills around this thing. So on the count of three, it's sports like talk tradition. We need y'all to show us some love and to smash that subscribe button. Carly, can 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 your folks do that? Can we can Huntington Beach hold us down right now? Of course, guys, click it, subscribe. Right. Come on, leave some comments. Tell there me we go. There we go. Hey, she she a ball all the time. One, two, three. Boom. Hey, welcome to the Sports Life Talk family. If you did smash that subscribe button, you got all access content, all backstage passes to over 190 episodes of Sports Life Talk. You got next. And uh, like Kevin and I say, we don't do fans. We don't do followers. You are a new member to the family. But Carly, we got we got us about 50, 60 new family members out there, hundreds. I know I can hear the bells dinging all throughout. I ain't going to be able to sleep. This thing going to be blowing up so much. But you got to cross the burning sands. Now, I want you to think, take, I want you to treat this because Kevin think he got a little jump. I want you, and Ke- I want you to imagine yourself, right? You a visionary. You, you a person that you see it out there, right? So you versus Kevin one-on-one, you actually let him score a couple of buckets. Okay. But now it's time to seal the show and I need you to knock down this three from the corner to put Kevin out of his misery. Can you do that for me right now? No, that's my spot. Come on. There it is. Welcome to the Sports Life Talk initiation. <laughs> Carly, come on. We've been rapping. We've been talking through text. Don't do me like that, B. Jones. I thought you and I were going to take on the sisters two on two. 
Bruh, let me get in shape first. How, how long I got? How long I got, Kevin? <laughs> hey, We're going we to need a year, so let's move on. Let's do the next year. <laughs> oh, the question, though, Kevin, the problem with that is, like, she's six foot. I'm, I'm 5'11". We are already in trouble, dog. <laughs> yeah, and then your sister, uh, Katie Lou, how tall is she? Like, six She's six three. So, six yeah. Three. <laughs> Bruh, we... No, I can't do it. I can't even do it. We yeah, can play horse. Horse. Nah, we ain't play... We definitely can't beat him in horse, B. Jones. Yeah, not horse. Don't do horse. <laughs> you know what? Can y'all play? Y'all gonna play dominoes or spades? We're gonna play y'all. Tell me when. We can All right. Play. So, <laughs> we can do a little ping pong. Little ping pong. Spades. Oh, oh, we oh. spades. Ping pong. Let's go. We go at ping pong. Hold on. I can now. go at ping pong too, Kevin. You know what, B. Jones? We may just want to sell it down. All right. To initiate <laughs> you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. My top five music artists. See, these are my top five that I like to listen to. I don't think they're the greatest of all time, but. My top five. My first concert I ever went to was J. Cole, 2014 Forest Hills Drive. That was awesome. I like um, I like Justin Bieber. He's up there. I like Bieber too. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I like hey, old Bieber. No Bieber. That. Hey, that, 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 no that, shame in that. You know, that song Yummy he got. <laughs> that, that, that goes nah, Kevin, well. you gotta go back to the 2013 Justin Bieber hits, man. I'm going to Yummy. Go ahead, Carly. I like old Bieber, new Bieber. Yeah. I like old Bieber. Uh, we got Rihanna is up there for me. Rihanna over Beyonce for me. I'm going to say it. Ooh. I know. I know. A little controversy face. this afternoon. I got to say it. And then I like, I mean, Beyonce's up there too, but uh, I like LMA. I listen to a lot. And then my second concert I ever went to was Chance. And I really Chance like Chance, rapper. and I like what he does for the community. Yeah, so Chance up there. The LMA got did it for me, Kevin. This is over the top. Yeah, I got, I, you, know, you know LMA is dating, uh, supposed to be dating Jason Tatum right now. Didn't know really? that, but shout out she to was, Jason she Tatum. Was just at the last Sparks game. She walked by me. I was like, oh my gosh. That boy got <laughs> blessed. All right, Kevin, how what you giving him, man? <laughs> oh, this is, this is a shooter, man. Give her like six of them. You can just yeah. keep hitting the button. There we go. There we go. <laughs> we ring them up. Kevin is, hey, we broke now. We gave all the money out. <laughs> oh, well, it was worth it. All right, so who are some of your favorite sports teams? Uh, my favorite sports team is always, and I'm not just saying this, it always is what my little sister is playing on. doesn't matter what team. So right now, it's the Sparks. Even though they're losing. They're yeah. Losing. <laughs> yeah. That's still a good team, though. Yeah. And then, I was... I was up at Stanford like the four years when the Warriors got like big and good again. And so I don't know if you call me a bandwagon fan, but I was there, you know, I was up there in the Bay Area. So I like I like watching the Warriors. There is no way that we would ever call you a bandwagon fan. <laughs> and, and if <laughs> they had chased anyway, anyway. after your face anyway, we'll wait till yeah. after. <laughs> But, but Kevin, if they had watched last Wednesday night show, I addressed bandwagon, and I, yeah, you I, did. I, I, I'm defending you. If you are a bandwagon fan, shout out to you, man. You got the right to be a one or two. I had to give my reasons, though. I was up there. I felt like I was part of it. No, no. See, and this is one thing that he left out. We got people in Texas that I grew up with that all of a sudden are Warrior fans. Yeah, there you so, go. <laughs> yeah, that, that was my big problem. But B. Jones, this is not about you or I, you and me. It's about Carly. All right, so who is your favorite superhero and why? Hmm. So just recently, I watched the entire Marvel series. I had never watched Marvel before. I got COVID in January, and my sister and I watched the whole thing. What a, what the, more perfect time to watch the whole Marvel series than that? And it's Iron Man. He's the best. He's the best. Robert Downey. Uh, we we need more people to say Iron Man. Yeah. We, no, we've had a couple of Iron Man, though, B. Jones. We've had our share. I, I, I don't feel like we have enough. I think we need more Iron Man. Yeah, because of Batman. It got to be Batman. That's why. All right, uh, Tony Stark, since every good superhero needs their own theme music, what would your uh, theme song be? Oh, I feel like, I mean, the song has been on my mind lately. I listen to it every day. It's I Like You by Post Malone, his new song. And I feel like I can see Robert Downey Jr. like walking down the street going, I like you. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that works with him. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know we we're gonna get the performance from Carly. I, 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 it, it was it was such a a a, a, a Carly type performance too because I I I, I, I tracked her on IG. That's that's her energy. That's her vibe right there. Y'all got true authentic Carly Samuelson right there. So 
And I wish we'd have knew the song actually jammed out with her. But Post Yo. Malone is jamming, though, KT. Yeah, he is. Like credit. Post Malone, man. I really do. It's a good song. It's new. Check it out. Uh, what's one song? Now you got... You know what? I remember that later. So, on behalf of the SLT Nation, we want to welcome you to our family, Carly. So, B. Jones, Thank take you. it away. All right, Shooter. Man, I'm so excited to have you on the show. I, I just just following your story, and, and now I'm I gotta admit something. First and foremost, to all all the the sports life talk family members out there that's been keeping up with us, I was not a WNBA fan through and through up until a couple of years ago. My first game, I went to a Wings game. We were invited out by Asia Door. Uh, her, her dad had invited. It's just it, we we got linked up. Uh, and I enjoyed it. Ever since then, I've been in love with it. So now, I, as I learn and I, I develop, and I'm I'm just hearing these stories, and then I kind of saw your your advertisement or your your your, your uh, post about parody about how you your your family how y'all going out putting it on full. We gonna talk about that too. We gonna talk about the family bond and how you guys are united. But t- tell us a little bit about growing up in this family. I mean, like. You got, like, I call you shooter, but you got shooters <laughs> everywhere. Like, I bet your mama can put up baskets. I mean, y'all, y'all hooping like 24 7 over there in the Samuelson house. Like, tell us what it was like growing up in Huntington Beach and your family. Was, I mean, just what you said 24 7 basketball for sure. Like, yeah, we're basketball through and through. My mom is from England, so um, that's why I played for the Great Britain national team. But my dad, played professionally over there and that's where he met her and then he brought her back home with him um and then you know i think they secretly wanted us all to play basketball but we dabbled in other sports you know a little soccer here and there even ballet we were too big for ballet um but i don't know my older sister bonnie she chose like basketball and that's kind of what she wanted to do like i said i think that's probably what she went to most but my dad loved it and you know that father daughter bond if your dad's having fun like you like it the most so yeah we yeah. kind of just just followed bonnie and that's why we're so close because we all did the same thing for our now, whole it, lives are there any brothers nope just us three yeah so bon- bonnie's one then you came along and then katie lou wow mm-hmm. And, and we talking about D1 scholarships all over this thing. So it like y'all weren't bad at basketball. We ain't just talking about a family that's playing for fun. Y'all took it serious. But you, as far as your personal journey, when did when did it like hit home for you? Like, hey, this basketball, this game means something to me, and I want to put my all into it, day in and day out. I really credit my parents for you know taking us to the gym every single day and shooting. When I say we go work out we would go shoot. We would do nothing else but just shoot and play shots. So that's why we can all shoot so good. But yeah, I think probably, I don't know, pretty young, like literally probably before 10, 10, maybe around there. Like it was what we did. Like as a family, that's what, you know, what are we doing today? We're getting up shots. We're going to practice. We're playing games. And from there, it's it's just like literally part of my DNA. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's dope. That's super dope. Now y'all went to May today. And uh, a modern day. Make sure I got to say that correctly. Modern day, but I like made today too. <laughs> hey, well, I, I'm from I'm from Louisiana. I'm from. <laughs> cut, cut me some slack, all my Californians out there. I'm from Louisiana. We put a twang on everything. But uh, but with that being said, like I I knew that as a football school, so it's it must have a big basketball program too, because you guys all fed out of that school. So what was your prep days like? Man, it, modern day is huge. Like you just said, I talk to people like even out of the country, like when I'm in Europe. And some random people know what modern day is. It, it, yeah. I'm like, it's, it's like the top high school ever. But it was big football school, big sports school in general. Um, again, grateful that I got to graduate from there. I actually only went there my senior year. Um, we kind of transferred and Lou went through three years. But, man, the prep was a lot. <laughs> Just a lot of practice, a lot of shooting. Like now, this is what a fun part gets because you chose Stanford. What made you choose the University of Stanford? It was a variety of things. I think I, at the time, didn't plan on playing basketball after college. And so I thought academically that was the best offer that I had. Um, And also I wanted to stay on the West Coast, I think, closer to home. And then it is partly that Bonnie, my older sister, went there as well. So I have a close family. I wanted to be where she was. But 
don't think Samra was a bad choice to follow my sister. <laughs> you play for a legendary coach. You play, and, and 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 that's what that's where the fun part started. Again, I started looking at your collegiate journey. Uh, your numbers stand out. I mean, from a three point shooting perspective, that I read an article that said you are the greatest Stanford shooter since 1990. The only person that they said was was busting your head was Jennifer Azy. And I looked up. I'm like. Jennifer Azy, like we're talking about a Hall of Fame caliber basketball player. I had to I had to go back and start reading the reading the, the summaries better on, on Carly Samuelson here. So 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 you holding all of these records. I mean, you got the opportunity, a unique opportunity to play in the Final Four as a freshman. Yeah. And then you come back and play in it as a senior. Is that right? Mm-hmm. What were those two different experiences like? And give me the give me the dynamics of like when you were 18 playing in it versus you were 22 playing in it. Tell us what that was like. Yeah, and that was like it was like almost like a fairy tale kind of ending, you know, to my co- collegiate career. But yeah, as a freshman, you come in and you, you I'm playing with Chinea Gumake, you know, first round, first pick of the draft the next year. Um, so I'm just learning. Like, and the game's faster. That like like you said, I'm playing for Tara Vandermeer, legend. Just trying to adjust, like wrap my head around everything. I don't think I was playing much, probably like less than 10 minutes. I think I touched the floor in that Final Four game. Um, I don't remember anything, but like, look, it was like overwhelmingly like huge crowd playing UConn. Uh, we lost, but you know, it was it was a crazy experience. And and then you experience that your first year and you, you think that's the expectation, right? That you're going to get that each year and you don't. Um, two years and then it's finally my senior year. We weren't as good, supposedly, right? We don't have all Americans, all this um, and we like in the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight, we were down like 16 points both of those games, and we came back and won. And it just felt, I mean, and I played like that year. I joke with my dad all the time because my senior year, I tied the record to the minute of most minutes played in a season. That's right. Mm-hmm. 1,274. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I joke with him all the time, and I'm like, yeah, I broke that record, dad, or tied it. And he's like, well, don't you think you should have broke some more records if you're playing the most minutes in the season? I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, thanks. Oh, gut punch. <laughs> For sure. But I, yeah, I mean, that was special. Like just grinding to that Final Four and being a big part of it, being the captain of the team two years in a row and then, and then taking us like as a team to the Final Four. It felt, it felt cool. And to meet my sister there. Um, and she was playing for UConn on the other side of the bracket. That was the goal, man. I wanted to get there with her for my last my last game. Yeah, you all Pac-12. I mean, you got a couple of regional team uh, uh, awards in there. So, I, hey, I saw, I saw it, I saw it. So, so now you 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 playing in these bright lights. You you playing at this highest level. What made you decide to take your career to that next level? Because I remember earlier, earlier you said you wasn't anticipating it. it the, yeah. the part wasn't it wasn't the, the plan wasn't to go pro, right? No. Somewhere that switched. Yeah, I think I fell in love with the game my last two um, seasons at Stanford. Like being like the captain of the team, like one of them, like back to back years, and I kind of just bought into what Coach Tara was was doing, and I didn't want it to be over. So my last game, we lost in the Final Four, and then the draft happens like a week later, and I didn't tell anybody, but I like secretly watched like the second, third rounds, like you know maybe my name will get thrown out there. I don't know. I didn't know you have to like declare your name, but anyway, I didn't make it, didn't get drafted. I I went to the dining hall, go ate some dessert and it was like, okay, I'm retired. I get a phone call, like no joke, like 10 minutes later that I'm invited, like my agent that I was going to be with or something called me and he was like, Hey, the sparks are inviting you to camp. And I was like, Oh my God. (laughs) So I just went to camp and let me tell you guys, I did not miss one shot in camp. I've never shot so good in my entire life because I was just like happy to be there. I thought it was so, I was just like, this is the coolest thing ever. I made every shot and I was going to make that team. And I broke my foot the day before a girl sat on my foot and I broke it. Yeah, it was wild. So, but that, that experience was like, okay, I can do this. Let me just keep going. Like, and that's why I'm still playing to this day because I got invited to that camp and I did really good and I was going to make the team. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. You 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 made it to Phoenix. 
you played there. I know you did some 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 uh, hardship contracts and stuff like that. But I'm gonna tell you, it was one pitch I saw that almost brought a tear to my. Eye. It was you in that Dallas Wings uniform. You know, I'm a dog Dallas Wings fan. What we need to do to get you back? Who I need to call? We need you back on. Hey, because we just took a heart wrenching. Man, me and Kevin went to the game on on Saturday night, and we took a heart wrenching loss. But we we need that shooter, Kevin. With that shooter, we would we would have beat this guy. Uh, I think we would have beat this guy. No, I totally agree, man. It's just, and if the rest would have been better, but that's a whole. <laughs> <laughs> Call it, you know. Me and Kevin had this debate, and I want your opinion on it because uh, I, 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 well, I don't know, Kevin. I don't know if I had this debate with you yet, but I was thinking to myself, like, does does the WNBA sidelines? Because me and Kevin, we were close. We we were we were four rows off of the floor, and you could hear the players talking. And y'all chirping. They were chirping at each other with some foul language said, but the fans, the fans were so sterile. You know, you sit down and there's a message in the cup holder that says, you know, be careful what you say. You'll be subject to it. Do you think that they make these games too nice and it reduces the, the emotional experience as a fan, which is one of the things I think why fan because i'm like if we would have an nba game we would have been booing and cussing at the <laughs> ref we would have been raising hell for some of these calls and it was nobody was saying that it was just like we were watching golf it was hmm. the shy candace yeah <laughs> no i don't know i think uh i think it's a different experiences at different gyms for sure like i go to every sparks game um and some are more crowded than others um, I say it like the family seats that my sister gets us were like three fours, three rows up too. And I don't know, there'd be people yelling. <laughs> for sure. It, it gets, not, it gets pretty intense. Things. Yeah, and, and even in the family section. And like, I think it depends. I, I see what you're saying for sure. I see those cards too. Like, be careful. But I say take the risk. Go ahead and have fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see what you can get away yeah, with. <laughs> we, we couldn't take that risk because somebody invited us to their game. And yeah. I got you, we want to keep you. going to those games. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't want to do that. All right, so now, like, uh, you you just went over to Europe. You busting heads over there in Europe. I see you. You went and you got two trophies. What? Tell us a little bit about this picture that we got right here on the screen. Yeah, that was. I think I don't know. That must have been this season. I think, but yeah, um, I played for this team in Spain for three years. I've played pro in Europe for five. Um, amazing experience. I love Spain so much. Um, my last two with them, we I played with my sister Lou. Um, we both started on the team. We played together and we won the championship, um, a Spanish championship. I won the Spanish cup twice. And then we made it to, we played in Euro league as well, which is like the top league in Europe. Um, we went to the final four back to back years, which was really hard to do. Um, we got silver and then bronze. Um, but one of my favorite stories about that is we played, uh, ECAT, which is the, the big Russian team that Brittany Griner was playing for. Um, in the finals, not this season, but last season, and their starting lineup, I start at the three. I started on Stewie. On Brianna, Brianna Stewart, Stewart. At the three, yes. And they had Courtney Vandersloot, Allie Quigley, Stewie at the three, Emma Miesemann, who plays for Chicago, Chicago. and Brittany Griner, and John Quell Jones coming off the bench. Like, are you kidding John me? John Quell coming off the bench? Off the bench, yes. And we only lost by 10, but it was like the most fun game I've ever been a part of. I got to start on Stewie. It was that's so cool. Like, that sounds like damn near WNBA All-Star game. Yes, yes. It is. Yes. Hey, we don't. Shout out to Allie Quigley, who we actually met Saturday. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. Hey, yeah. that's pretty cool. All right. So you and Allie, y'all in a three-point contest. Who, who going to win? I mean, I, I, I got to be confident in myself, but we talking about the four-time three-point contest. Four <laughs> <laughs> you ask me anybody else in the world I'll I know myself. right but Carl, I, know, I right? know this is your show but when we met her she's probably one of the most humble nicest I, athletes I've ever met in my life She she's amazing her and Slew I, I love them both like they're they're such good people for sure I love Allie's story too Cool. Well, well, I'm gonna tell you something. One of the, the most remarkable, remarkable things I saw about those pitches, and I'm gonna let you get it, Kevin. I know I went long, oh, but uh, but the smile, the energy that you you have playing with your teammates, you you have this authenticity about yourself that you truly love the game of basketball. I can tell that you just genuinely want to hope, and I mean, it's it's just like it oozes from your IG page and your Twitter page. I gotta ask, and I'm, I'm gonna give it to Kevin. Where does this come from? 
from? I mean, was it the injury that made a difference? Is it being able to play with your sister and have fun? I mean, what is this? Is this natural just glow come from? Um, I think I like to play the game like the way that I think the game should be played, and which is just team ball playing together. There's no extra like. You know, when you're playing against your teammates and your people are trying to get stats and that kind of thing, I like to play to to win a championship in a season and to build with team. And so when I get to do that, I really, I just feel passionate about big plays. I like, I think life should be lived like feeling, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. don't get too high, don't get too low, but still enjoy those moments. Um, keep it steady in between, but, you know, really feel like passionate we work i work hard for this every day so i'm gonna get hyped when i make a three even if i make a lamp i'll get more hyped because that's more rare for me but <laughs> like th- those kinds of things I, I i i love feeling i love watching people to play that way um and i and i just think it's good for the team it's good like competitiveness really all right carly so i told you before the show i'm a huge fan of yours i've i've followed you and your sister because i'm a yukon fan but now doing this show I'm just a fan of everybody. Well, hold on, Kevin. I got. I, I Carly. I'm, I'm gonna say this. Oh. So, All right, go so, ahead. so we were we, we, when uh, when he was talking to Rachel about you. Literally, he. I, I don't know where your name came from. He he said he said she said who, who anybody else y'all want me to reach out to? And he was like, can can you reach out to Carly Samuelson? I'm looking at him like Carly Samuelson. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And he, he was like, no, we gotta have Carly. I'm a big fan of Carly. Please, can you get her on the show? I'm, I, hey, Kevin was a fanboy. That's I'm just throwing yeah, you out there, Kevin. I appreciate you, Kevin. I appreciate it. Yeah, you. but I already told her before the show, B. Jones, so we didn't need that little. Yeah, but thing. you didn't tell it in front of our family members, so I had to make sure they knew he was a fan. I'm a Carly Samuelson fan. Big Sorry. fan. Good Lord, all right, B. Jones. All right, so the the term uh, "girl dad" became popular a couple of years ago. But that's something that's been a part of your life forever. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your dad? Yeah, uh, my dad is literally, I think, can define what a girl dad is for sure. We got, I got two other sisters. All of our dogs have even been girls. So he's always been around girls. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And I mean, to this day, I don't know if he wanted a boy ever to play basketball, you know, but he ended up with three girls that got to play the sport that he played. So I think he, he's pretty happy about that. But yeah, he... He took us to the gym every day. Anything, anytime we wanted to go, even when we didn't want to go, he was like, hey, we want to get better. Yeah, let's go, you know? And I appreciate that about him. Like, he took it serious, but we had fun with it too, um, which is why I think I, I still love the game. My sister's still playing. So, like, shout out to him and my mom for driving us after work to these far places to play practice and games because without them, for sure, it wouldn't be here. And he was also like a, a star of ESPN. Yeah. They <laughs> are yeah, during the tournament. Yeah, they really covered because he was flying back and forth to watch Lou and I play um, in the NCAA tournament. But I kid you not, he one time, multiple times, actually, I was like going out to eat with him like around Stanford. And at the, br- like, at the brunch spot, the waiter noticed him and knew who he was and not me. I. I thought it was so funny. He was like, hey, are you the dad that's been on ESPN? <laughs> he was like, yeah, that's me. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I know. Well, if he wanted sons, I mean, this is perfect for him. I mean, his daughters play at the highest levels. So shout out to him, man. Shout out to him. And B. Jones, are you ready? What's up? Are you ready? Well, 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 I'm ready. Uh, so, so, Carly, you know what it's like if you and your sister, y'all decide to pick up that rock. Y'all, y'all, y'all got to get busy. Somebody got to win. It's still in love. It's all in love, but it's oh, either you yeah. or it's either her. And you know what it's like to lose, right? But you also know what it's like to win. Uh-huh. So, Kevin, welcome to the championship rounds, Carly <laughs> Samuelson. You are now officially calling all the shots. Have you ever played a game called Would You Rather? Of course. All right, so the rules are very simple. Both Kevin and I will present an option to you. You select one of those options, and whichever option you select, that host will gain a point. The first host to get two points or the best out of three will win this episode's game of championship rounds. And uh, I don't know, it might be some celebratory uh, drinks or something going on after this thing, <laughs> but I guarantee you, hey, you know what, all this stuff about Kevin being a fan, well, he also said he could shoot better than you. All right, here no, we go. No, I did not. You Round number <laughs> you. one. Kevin won the last game. The ball is in your court, sir. I can't believe you pulled that. That, That's weak. All right. So (laughs) would you rather have a shoe made by Nike named after you 
and the proceeds go to a scholarship in your name or or would you have would you rather have the Samuelson family name be given an award or a scholarship to a Stanford or UConn player that's working hard day in and day out so sort of like a legacy award oh wow God, Lee, you soft that up mm. Oh no! You talking about Nike the scholarships? Yeah, you, put, you try to tug at the heart, Stanford. Or... All right, all right, guys. Well, it's the same as an award. I got you. I I have to. Both options great. Both options great. I gotta go with uh, B Jones because because my sister signed by Puma. That's the only reason. <laughs> I can't go with the Nike. Well, hey. well, B. Jones, just wait to, <laughs> wait to round two. Then. I know, right? I know, right? This is crazy. This is great. I, I might steal it though. We're gonna see. All right, let's go. You want it? Oh, I get to go first. All right. So, would you rather get right now sign on the dotted line a hundred million dollar contract, right, with New Balance? You, Jack Harlow, y'all doing y'all thing, right? And you get your own clothing line. Or remember your first answer. All right. Get a $60 million deal with Puma and you get an additional $32 million when you turn 55. But mine is $100 million right now and your own clothing line. And you get to throw it at your sister and say, hey, you got Puma, I got New Balance. Yeah, but uh, her and her sister can be together, B. Jones. They love doing stuff together. They already play together. Oh, stop it. I'm trying That's to for sure, Kevin, because uh, I, I'm all about saving money, first of all. I don't need it all right now. Yes, I can invest <laughs> it and it could grow exponentially for sure, but I like that fact that that $32 million is just going to come at me no matter what I do later. So. Oh, come on! Oh, really, B. Joe? You can't do Carly like that. <laughs> Everybody else will not Carly. She a shooter. Shooters used to, hey, shooters used to a little throwing them off their game, Kevin. They, no, she no. mentally tough. B. Jones, I'm fighting you tomorrow. Also, all right, so if I had if I had to go with New Balance, then I would have to get rid of all my Puma stuff. But if I just continue <laughs> with Puma, I could just yeah. But gone. it's gonna have Carly Samuelson name on it though. It's gonna have that KS. It's gonna be at a fire logo behind it. We're gonna make it dope. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> all right, so round three, and ooh, this is gonna be a tough one. Would you rather host your own cooking show where you interview athletes while eating at their favorite places to eat in their hometowns, or or host a basketball YouTube pickup series where you and Bonnie get to interview professional athletes while playing in the gyms that they grew up in. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Kevin. For sure, the basketball one. For sure. Because my sister Bonnie is a would be a phenomenal host. She loves the mic, and she would interview people like crazy. So that sounds fun. Kevin? Yeah, I but think Kevin should get an extra point for being for following me since forever. Yeah, but it did me no good in championship rounds, Carly. Now I'm just I know, all, I'm sorry. I gotta be upset Carly, for 30 seconds. The ring is the thing. You know all about winning. You know, look at me and Carly with our pitches. She got her trophies. I got her trophy. This is a great day. This is a great day. Oh my goodness. So you, now I know what it feels like when you be Katie Lou at a shooting competition <laughs> or you work body over. I, I wore red and everything. I just don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> this is what it feels like. Okay. All right. This one hurts the most. This hurts the most. I, I don't mind losing. Well, I hate losing to you, B. Jones. <laughs> lose this episode. Is, yeah. Out of every episode that we had. <sighs> I know it feels so good. All right, Carly, I'm going to finish this with Bliss. But the title of the show is Sports Life Talks. You got next. You hoping. You working with parody. We got so much stuff we couldn't talk about just due to straight, you know, straight time constraints. But what does the future hold for you right now? It, Kevin been following you f- for a long time. But, you know, like I'm a new fan, right? I- I'm new to Carly Samuelson. What, what do I have to expect going forward in the future? Like I said, I appreciate you, Kev. But... Man, I'm going to Australia. I'm playing in Australia next season, which I'm excited about. Nice little change of pace from Europe. Um, Stay away from the Vegemite. Oh, I will. I've tried Vegemite. That is not for me. (laughs) Trash. Um, uh, Maybe I'll change my mind after a whole season in Australia, but we never know. Yeah, I work for a company called Parity. We just started trying to provide resources for women athletes. 
um, in a lot of different ways. And I like being in that space of just, just helping the game grow, helping women athletes grow. And yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Well, I'm going to say this before before you finish up, Kevin, right. Right. about parity, because uh, it's something important that needs to be said. Kevin and I, we debate this all the time. I, I, I don't think it's a week that goes by where Kevin and I, is not, we're not asking each other, what can WNBA do? to? Because when I look at Brianna Stewart, you talk about Stewie. She is literally the dopest player I've seen in a while. I said she could sit 12 on, on, on NBA rosters, right? The 10th, 11th man coming off the bench. But her, she's like making, I don't know. A, a, a fraction of what a Giannis or a we're looking at these multi-million dollar contracts so something has to be done to create some equality in this game and give you guys some exposure the only reason I brought this up is because your parody mentioned something that I thought was the was the the, the straw and the, 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 the hat right it, it was the the stone in the bucket it was cr- about the stories it was about us learning more about the players and the journey and the struggles and here, you know, being more intimate with these players. And so is that what parody is all about? Is that really what you guys are trying to do? Yeah. Well, it's like, I appreciate you guys. You guys are doing just that, right. You're telling these stories and, and, and I love that. Um, parody. We, we try to tell stories, show what these women athletes are doing, provide, we provide um, sponsorships to these athletes. So they get paid to post things with different brands. Um, just anything that we do with them, we pay them. So we're just trying to get more money That's and dope. more educational resources, yes, into women athletes' pockets. Um, and yeah, like you said, Stewie is literally the, the best women's basketball player in the world right now. And uh, shout out to Puma for getting her signature shoe out there. Um, should have been done, but that's awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, a lot more can be done, but I appreciate you guys. You guys are doing just that, telling these stories. So thank you. And we going to keep doing it, too. Yes, we are. And speaking of Stewie, B. Jones, I'm still upset with ESPN Fantasy Basketball because <laughs> we had an auto draft, Carly, and there's no no disrespect to Tina Charles, but there's no way it should have drafted Tina Charles before Stewie for me. Stewie's number one for me. I think she should have been number one. Yeah. I know. How, yeah. how does that happen? ESPN, y'all need to holler at me. All right, so uh, Carly, <laughs> you have any shout outs you want to give? Oh, first, I want to shout out Parity. Uh, we've been talking about them, but I appreciate what they do and, and how we're trying to help women athletes. Shout out to my sisters. I love them. Shout out to my parents. We talked about them, too. Uh, shout out to you guys. Shout out to Kev in particular. Uh, oh, being a fan Kev, we got a special. Yes, supporting for a long time. Um, appreciate you guys. Yeah, I still lost in championship rounds. That's going to hurt <laughs> this week. All right, so this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next. Tell them, hey, I got a chance to go out with B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. I want you to do the same thing. With that said, Carly, who are you giving your game ball to? Uh, for sure, Erica McCall. Uh, she played in the league for, I played with her for four years at Stanford. Yeah, okay. So Yeah, we know who Erica McCall been, is. Yep, and she has her own podcast called Birds of Word. Um, she's a great host. She's a great person. She's really fun. Um, she's got a great story as well. So for sure. I'll reach hey, out Erica. To you are I only on call the it clock. Bird. I don't even know who Erica is. Bird. <laughs> Bird. You are on the clock. We're going to be reaching out to you. Kevin going to be sliding in your DM trying to get you in this thing. But Carly, wow. Your energy is infectious. Your attitude. You, you, you are just the epitome of sports life talk. You're doing everything the right way. I can't wait to see you play live and just, just be a part of your hooping and just, hey, keep doing what you do because... You are just tenacious. Everything about you is 100. I love it. And we appreciate you so much for joining the show. Carly Samuelson, you got next. Sports Life Talk Nation, thank y'all for rocking with us one more again. I'm telling y'all, man. Hey, Kevin, we we flying, baby. We on our way. And we can't do it without you guys. And I want to thank y'all because you know who the real hero is? You. You that are watching us right now, because you're going to do a couple of things. One, you're going to help us to spread this amazing story of Carly Samuelson. Two, you are going to share this episode with someone out there who needs to hear about this, right? Everybody can't go play in the WNBA. There are other paths, there are other lanes, right? And then lastly, you are going to smash that subscribe button because we need your we need your love and we need your support so we can keep doing what we're doing. And we're gonna do we're gonna support we're gonna celebrate you by giving you a free t-shirt. There you go. Be the first you know how many how many can we give out, Kevin? How many can we give out? 
I mean, you gonna pay for it. It's on you. Oh, okay. All right. So we'll we'll do this. We'll do this. Anybody, anybody out there? That's right. If you go to our IG page, at Sports Life Talk. Tag in five friends. Leave us your name, your shirt size, and your address. You're going to get a t-shirt. That's simple. That's simple. I, I ain't no restrictions. If a hundred y'all do it, I'm going to pay a hundred t-shirts now. Not to break the bank. Well, now, Kevin, I'm going to be over your house sleeping on the couch because my wife going to put me out. But I'm going to make sure I fulfill that, that, that promise to y'all. All right? And listen, don't, don't forget, Kevin and I, we do go live every Wednesday night to 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We stream on YouTube. We stream on Twitter. Kevin, what else do we stream? Yeah, they come check us out. Wednesday nights, 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. And it's more than just another sh- uh, sports show. So is that it, Kevin? Is that all the places we are? Yeah, yeah. Just make okay. sure you subscribe. That's the that's the big. That's thing. it. Subscribe, and you gonna get the invite. All right, Kevin, man. Now look, it's just your big moment, Kevin. This is your moment. You 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 gotta. You wanted this so badly, man. I'm gonna let you leave. The lead the show with the final words, KT. All right. There is nothing more valuable to give someone than your time. So we want to thank you for watching this amazing episode. So, like B. Jones and I said, the whole episode. Please hit that subscribe button and follow us at Sports Life Talk on all our other social media pages. You too, Carly. Now it's time for you to pass the ball. If you know someone who want, who has a dope story, please send them our way. If you know Halle Berry, please. Lord, if you know Halle Berry, send us our way. <laughs> All right, Carly, thank you so much for rocking with us. You were dope. And whatever you need from us, please let us know. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you having me. One on. last thing. Do the Post Malone dance again. <laughs> I like po- it. I like <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Sports Life Talk Nation, we love y'all. Stay safe, be blessed, respect each other, and love one another because together we are better and keep dreaming big because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet! See what's crazy is I knew you had next because you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, so you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk got the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast to tune into just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom. You are what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rinse repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next. Next is a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah. You got next, yeah. I can feel it. You're a winner just like me. You got next. And what comes next? Tune in next time and you'll see. Cause if you got next, yeah. If you got next. If you got next, then you're just like me. If you got next. If you got next, yeah. Sports life talking this